It was a crazy idea. Poseidon was the god of the sea, not of every liquid everywhere. Then again, Tartarus had its own rules. Fire was drinkable. The ground was the body of a dark god. The air was acid, and demigods could be turned into smoky corpses. So why not try? He had nothing else to lose. He glared at the poison flood encroaching from all sides. He concentrated so hard that something inside him cracked, as if a crystal ball had shattered in his stomach. Warmth flowed through him. The poison tide stopped. The fumes blew away from him, back towards the goddess. The lake of poison rolled towards her in tiny waves and rivulets. Eccles screeched. What is this? Poison, Percy said. That's your specialty, right? He stood, his anger growing hotter in his gut. As the flood of venom rolled towards the goddess, the fumes began to make her cough. Her eyes watered even more. Oh, good, Percy thought. More water. Percy imagined her nose and throat filling up with her own tears. Akluse gagged. Ah, I! The tide! The tide! Yes, the tide. The venom had reached her feet, sizzling like droplets of a, on a hot iron. She wailed and stumbled back. Percy! Annabeth called. She'd retreated to the edge of the cliff, even though the poison wasn't after her. She sounded terrified. It took Percy a moment to realize she was terrified of him. Stop! she pleaded in a hoarse voice. He didn't want to stop. He wanted to choke this goddess. He wanted to watch her drown in her own poison. He wanted to see just how much misery, misery could take. Percy, please! Annabeth's face was still and pale and corpse-like, but her eyes were the same as always. The anguish in it made Percy's anger fade. He turned towards the goddess. He willed the poison to recede, creating a small path of retreat along the edge of the cliff. Leave! he bellowed. For an emancipated ghoul, Aklus could run pretty fast when she wanted to. She scrambled along the path, fell on her face, and got up again, wailing as she sped off into the dark. As soon as she was gone, the pools of poison evaporated. The plants withered to dust and blew away. Annabeth stumbled towards him. She looked like a corpse wreathed in smoke, but she felt solid enough when she gripped his arms. Percy, please don't ever... Her voice broke into a sob. Some things aren't meant to be controlled, please. His whole body tingled with power, but the anger was subsiding. The broken glass inside him was beginning to smooth at the edges. Yeah, he said. Yeah, okay. But we have to get away from this cliff, Annabeth said. If Aklus brought us here some kind of sacrifice... Percy tried to think. He was getting used to mo moving with the decimists around him. He felt more solid, more like himself, but his mind still felt stuffed with cotton. She said something about feeding us to the night, he remembered. What was that about? The temperature dropped. The abyss before them seemed to exhale. Percy and Annabeth backed away from the edge as a presence emerged from the void. A form so vast and shadowy, he felt like he understood the concept for dark for the first time. I imagine, said the darkness in a feminine voice, as soft as coffin lining, that the night with a capital N, after all, I am the only one.